Somebody say, oh. You got coffee and you got a little sugar, we can do a little better than that. The window's open, they should hear us out there. Say, oh yeah! Oh yeah! All right. Now, did that feel comfortable or uncomfortable? <laughs> if it's uncomfortable, that's great. Because that's where change is. You got to get uncomfortable. And you have to be comfortable with getting uncomfortable. And then once you get comfortable, what should you do? Get uncomfortable again. That's what change does. So that's why I kind of introduced myself, uh, well, welcomed you guys by doing the you know, little thing that I do, because I'm a hip hop artist. Let me take hip hop off and just say I'm an artist first. I'm just an artist, all around artist. So what I'm gonna do is explain how change, um, how I see change, I'll put it that way. How I see change, how it's benefited me. Um, and hopefully you leave here charged, ready to do something, all right? So, when I met Kelly, thank you for bringing me on board, actually. Applause for Kelly, please. <laughs> she, 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 she came to me and said, you know what, it would be great to start this thing off, and you know, the topic has changed. I'm like, you don't even know how appropriate that is for me right now. Like, I'm in it. I'm going through change right this moment. And so, you know, I'm honored to be up here. Um, we're going to get right into it, because we don't have a lot of time. So if I'm blowing through slides, you better look quick. So just keep being that's it. I'll be blowing through some slides. Um, so my name is Idris Wajit, Buffalo native, lifelong with us fire. Um, and Kelly gave me a new word that kind of describes me. A multi-potentialite. Anybody familiar with that term? A multi-potentialite. She said, you need to check out this video. You do so much. And basically, it's a new word for renaissance man, renaissance woman, somebody who does a lot of things. A multi-potential light is somebody who takes interest over lots of different things over time, right? So a jack of all trades and a master of none, but I like to call myself a jack of all trades and a master of some, because some I actually did master. I really did, I'm that good. And I am, <laughs> and I'm happy to say that now. Before it was looked on like, this guy, you need to do one thing, Idris. Do one thing, one thing, I'm like, dude, but, that's not how I'm wired. That's not how I'm wired. So, one of the things that I mastered, this, this picture, <laughs> this picture is from 2008, all right? In 2008, I had the opportunity with a buddy of mine, Tom, who's an audience, um, to go travel to Spain, right? So, in Spain, we visited Victoria, Barcelona, Madrid, and what's the other one? Uh, I can't remember the other, Zaragoza, yes, Zaragoza, thank you. And so I was blogging, right? I was blogging and taking pictures and just sharing with uh, my fans and people that were supporting me of what I was doing. This is one of the blog posts. Now the picture is not real, all right? <laughs> if you haven't figured that out, the picture is not real. However, the trip to Spain was very real. Um, as I said, I'm a multi-potential, I do a lot of things. I'm a graphic designer as well, so all I did was Right? Pop my head over, just felt appropriate. And that's how, I, that's how I feel today, though. That's how I feel today. I feel like that. All right? But this is what it, that's more so what it looked like what I did. When I got on stage, I would rap, I would perform, um, entertain, crowd. That's why I kind of started off with this, actually, oh. I still don't know what the cadence of ho is all about, but it, it, it gets people involved. I always believe in uh, involvement before information. So that's why I wanted to get you guys energy up. All right? So 2008. I was, I was doing my thing. I was doing music, my passion. One of the things that I was really excited about, I was climbing, um, super creative. You know, every day that's what I was doing. Creating music, being who I was, being honest and true to myself and my gift, and writing, producing beats. So everything I was rapping over was my music pretty much 99% of the time. Um, got a lot of acclaim, got a lot of press, got a lot of print. I mean, I was moving. I felt like I had a goal for the first time in my life that was clear, I was able to articulate it. I was able to do, you know, what I saw in my head. I got to the point where, just in these four videos alone, on YouTube in 2009, 2010, where I had a combined uh, amount of 1.5 million views, right, which is unheard of for a Western New York hip hop artist particularly, 
It was unheard of. It was all growing organically. These were signs to me like, man, I think I actually know what I'm doing. I might be good. I might be actually good at this because other people were confirming it. Like, it was very obvious to me, right? Then, this occurred, and change came knocking at my door with a subpoena. Like, here you go, right? <laughs> Take that. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm on my trajectory of, you know, making a living out of my craft. That's what I wanted to do, make a living out of my craft. And change came. I'm on the cover of Buffalo Spree, it was an amazing magazine in Buffalo, right? And not that I'm a I'm not an egotistic person, egotistical person. So I didn't feel like when I made the magazine that I made it, but I felt like, wow, I'm recognized by the rest of New York. You know, that's awesome. And my wife, my wonderful wife and supporter and life partner, she was laid off from her job. Basically, when I was doing this music, I was building, you know, building that to where I could hopefully do it as a living, was not afforded that opportunity. And so she was laid off. And so we had a decision to make. She's like, well, what are you gonna do? I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, give me two more months, it might happen. Three more months, I don't know, I was guessing. And I wasn't out there looking for work either because I was holding so fast to my goal, what I thought was going to be where I wanted to go. Um, but with uh, change is a wise sage. If we personify change, it's very wise. You can learn from it, you can teach. You can be resistant to it all you like, but if you think about change like the wind, for example, you can go with it or you can try to stand within it, and if that wind gets strong, you'll break. So if you look at two trees particularly, right? A palm tree sways, right? Other trees get uprooted by wind. That's what change can do. So I was pretty much uprooted. I didn't want to sway. I'm like, I don't want to go work. I don't want to go there. I don't, I don't want to do that. I'm focused here. Didn't happen. So just funny enough, in synchronicity, I guess, I get a call from a friend of mine who I worked with many years ago. And she goes, hey, Drees, when you're ready to grow up, give me a call. I got a job opportunity for you. When you're ready to grow up. All right. So I call back, like, oh, what do you mean? You know what I'm out here trying to do? You know, I'm living my dream. And she's like, look, dude, I hear that. You know, and she didn't know what was going on either. So it was an opportunity to go teach um, at a high school, at Tapestry Charter High School, particularly. Wonderful school. Wonderful school. Uh, went through three interviews, the whole process, and the whole time I'm like, mm, you know. It's not for me, I'm not going to get in with my time, they're not going to hire me. And sure enough, they hired me. And thankfully they hired me. Thankfully they hired me. So once again, a wonderful place to be. Wonderful place to be. Um, and really, I shared that it's a dream job. It was a dream job. It just wasn't my dream was the problem. It wasn't my dream. But I went, I did it. Um, I certainly gave it my best. I love inspiring kids. I was a visual arts teacher, teaching art. How difficult was that? You couldn't imagine. <laughs> you couldn't imagine, actually, how difficult that was. Oh, you teach art and trees? Oh, that should be cool, that should be. Yeah. If only you knew. So, what happened was I went to a spiral. I went to a spiral to where I did nothing creatively, nothing. I just showed you a slide of 1.5 million views. I'm on the bubble, as they say, I'm about to blow you, about to pop, then this happened. I did nothing creatively, no music, no art, no nothing. And I wasn't living. I could feel it every day. I could feel it. I was not living. And so this cycle, which is titled with the, what I'm here to talk about, is waiting on elevators. Really an acronym for woe. Woe is worry, right? Pain, agony, that's what a woe is. So I just made it into an acronym, waiting on elevators. 
Now, what does waiting on elevators really have to do with change? You have to put action into things in order to see change. All right? You have to put action into it. If you look at this cycle, this is what I was going through while I was teaching. Now, should I leave? I want to. Now, I have to. I must. I must leave. And then, well, what am I going to do for money? What are people going to think? All those fears and all those doubts. And then I will continue the course. And I will just keep going around, going around. How many people have experienced this? Okay, I'm glad I'm not alone. So I pulled this cycle, the five stages of change from, this, there's a study they did back in the 70s of how they showed the process of people who had a uh, problem uh, stopping smoking, right, to quit smoking. So this kind of inspired me to kind of make my own little wheel of it, of, about it, right? But this is where I was. I was in this cycle spiraling, not being productive at all. Action always eliminates what ifs. So the entire time I'm there going, what if? What if I? What if? What if? What if? When you take the action, when you take the action, you start operating from a what if standpoint to a what now. When you take the action, it becomes what now. What if you're just in your head still? You're still dreaming about things and you're thinking of all of the worst things. You, know, you very rarely think of the positive thing. You think about all of the worst things. What if? But the what now makes you be extra creative. Makes you be extra creative about problem solving, right? So, came up with a new one. This is what got me out of the slump. The only thing different with this model here is that the state of course arrow is pointing up and I added in the green arrow, which is the do, the action, which many of us don't do. I'm talking about everybody. The do seems to always be so difficult. So again, I was waiting on elevators, waiting on elevators. I'm pushing the button, waiting for change. I see the elevator up on the 12th floor on the dial. Why is it up there so long? Comes down to 11, 10, I'm still waiting. Change was not coming fast enough. No matter how many times you push the button, that elevator's coming on its own time. That's change. Believe me, change is coming. You just don't know when it's coming. So the advantage is to start putting action in motion and start being the change. You have to be the change. I had to be the change because I realized after five years of being there, nobody was coming to save me. Nobody was coming to save me. Oh, you're so talented, the trees. This is wonderful. What and it stops there. If I'm so wonderful, help me. Help me. No, nobody's coming to save you. Nobody's coming to save you. You gotta save yourself. On an airplane, when you go through turbulence, right? And you have children, we always wonder, like, why are they telling the parents to put the mask on themselves and then put the mask on the kids? You have to save yourself or you're no good to the kid. You put the mask on the kid and you get, you fall out of, you know, uh, out of the graces of being conscious. There's a problem. So I had to save myself, right? It's the do. And what the do is, is taking the stairs. This goes back to my first slide. Take the stairs. Take the stairs. You have control over the stairs or how fast you can walk those stairs or run those stairs. Take the stairs. Don't wait on the elevators. If you want change, be the change. As the wise phrase of by Gandhi says, be the change you want to see. You want to see some change? Kelly saw some change. She came here and said, man, Creative Mars is awesome. It's around in 120 other places. How come it's not in Buffalo? Mm, I'll wait. I'll hit the elevator. <laughs> man, somebody will do it. No, she took the stairs and here we are today. Here we are. Here we go. She didn't wait in the elevator. I'm glad you took the stairs. Yeah. So, during that whole time of me, I mean, I was really in a depressed state. 
while being there teaching. And again, this is not a reflection of the place because the students there do exactly what they're supposed to do as high school students, to be idiots. I was once an idiot too. I was an idiot as well, right? Um, the staff there was amazing. Some of the most brilliant people I've ever met that I had the opportunity to work with, the support system was amazing. The building was amazing. The environment, the atmosphere, everything it was me. I was suffering. While I was teaching art, I was not doing nothing for myself. And teaching that art, I was pouring everything into these kids and forcing it into the people who didn't necessarily want it. That was tough for me. That was tough for me to sit there and talk to a kid about, man, that's really good. Oh, why'd you get lying? This is ugly. Well, I'm a positive kind of guy. I like to see things optimistically. And I'm not going to lie to kids, so I've never lied to kids. And art is, you know, is a different kind of grading. It's not a right or wrong system, right? But it really, it really, it really took a lot out of me. The one thing that pulled me out of it was I had to claim who I was and be honest and honor who I was. And I'm an artist. I must create. That's how I live. Creativity is my neighbor. I live by it. You understand that? <laughs> Creativity is my neighbor. I live by it. And however you want to take that. And I had to honor that. And so, a friend of mine who's in the audience, thank you, David, she goes, hey, you haven't been drawing in a long time. I miss seeing your work and blah, 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 blah. Why don't you post a drawing five days in a row just to make sure you know she's making me accountable for doing it. And this is the first one I do. 58 weeks ago, I drew a drawing and it even has too many fingers on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote right there, there's too many fingers. January 30th, I drew for 15 minutes and 52 seconds. And the way that I draw, I don't use a pencil. I just use ink. I go right to the paper because my philosophy is, my philosophy is, in life you don't get a pencil, right? Commit, commit to what you do. Put it down on paper and you make it happen from there. So, I committed fully to it. Fast forward, yesterday marked 426 days of me drawing consecutively. Every day I draw because that's my way out. That's my way out. I'm doing it. I'm not waiting on the elevator. I'm not waiting to be saved. I chose myself. And I chose myself so much, in fact, that I believed in myself and started my business, Logic Crafters, in which I do all things creative. So if you need something creative done, graphic illustration, blah, 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 talk to me later. Anyway, so I started the doing. I chose myself. I took the stairs. I'm still taking the stairs. But every day I'm doing the action, all right? I'm doing the action. So whatever it is you want to do, make sure you do the action. Take the stairs. Don't wait on the change, be the change, all right? Because one day, we're all going to be in the box. Yeah. Or some people might want to just be cremated, that's cool. But you're going to be in the box. So while you're alive, don't walk around in the box. You're not dead yet. I'm not walking around in the box any longer. I'm not walking around in the box. So on February 29th, at an early morning meeting at school, I read my resignation to all of my colleagues. I stepped off because the person I had become, I was so broken that I was not able to even help the kids that I was with. If I can't help the kids, if I'm not whole, I can't even help at home. I was not whole. Now I'm whole. I'm back to where I was before when I was on top of that, the, 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 the matador guy. Like I'm back there now and I'm figuring it out. I'm figuring it out. And I'm being very honest, I'm being transparent, I'm figuring this thing out. So walk along with me as I do it, but I encourage you with this change. Don't wait on the elevators. Don't wait on the elevators. Take the stairs. So if you're sitting there and you say, hey, it's taking a long time to elevator come down. Anybody wanna take the stairs with me? And nobody goes? Go alone. Go alone and make it happen, all right? So that's what I leave you with today. Make something happen. Be the change. Bless you.